Hi, my name is Christy and this is the American Chinese Food Show, where we analyze historical artifacts like vintage menus, recipe books, photographs, and text to tell the story of American Chinese food. We know there were a lot of similarities between what upscale Chinese restaurants in America and in Guangdong or Hong Kong were offering at the beginning of the 20th century. The divergence leading to the rise of American Chinese food was created out of a combination of political and economic factors, one of which is the lack of more refined innovation in the Chinese culinary scene in America. Both sides had to change and make do to adjust to the environment with the end result of new dishes. But while Chinese restaurants in America were starved of new talent because of immigration policies, places like Hong Kong were getting an influx of money as well as people from all over the world. In this episode, we will go through a few new dishes that were created from the 30s to 60s in Guangdong and Hong Kong as a juxtaposition to the Chinese dishes created in the United States instead. We will focus on a menu from when the Lok Kwok Hotel Lok Kwok Zhao Dim first opened in 1933. It had seven stories and was already the tallest building in the Wan Chai district in Hong Kong. It was seen as a counterpart to the Peninsula, a five-star luxury hotel that was built in 1928. It has a rich history just like Hong Kong. It was occupied by the Japanese in 1941 and turned into a military club, then used as a British Navy camp in 1945. The first page of the menu includes seven types and sizes of shark fins from braised chicken simmer with crab roll and tamale and seven types of bird's nest soup with crab meat, osmanthus, minced chicken with asparagus or corn. There are also many chicken dishes including dragon going through the phoenix wings, long chun feng ye, which we covered in our very first episode in this channel. There is usually a lot of overlap of the dishes between Chinese restaurants in the United States and Guangdong and Hong Kong at this time until we get to the seafood section where access to ingredients make a bigger impact. There are 14 dishes on the seafood of which 9 are groupers like steam, stir fry, deep fried, ketchup sauced, 2 mullet and 3 scallop dishes. Something we seldom see in America a conch, a sea snail, and frogs, which each get to their own section. Specifically, I want to talk about three new dishes that became popular during this time. The first one, Da Liang Wild Chicken Roll. Da Liang Ye Gai Gun. Da Liang is a sub district in Shunde, Fu San. Guangdong province in China. Some of you might have heard the old saying, eat in Guangdong, meaning you get the best food in Guangdong in all of China. But there's one that follows eat in Guangdong, chefs from Sunda. A portion of what the school of Cantonese cuisine comes from Sunda. This dish was adjusted in the 1920s by a chef in Daliang. Instead of using chicken breast and testicles in the recipe, The Way of Eating by Yuan Mei, published in 1792, capturing a meal he had in eastern Guangdong, it now uses fatty pork wrapped in ham, steamed, then deep fried. Yup, today, Da Liang Wild Chicken Roll has no chicken in it. The second dish is Eight Treasure Duck. This dish is interesting because there are records that it started as 8 treasured chicken, which we also see in this menu from the Moon Cafe in San Francisco in the 1920s. The only menu I could find that includes an 8 treasured dish at the time in the United States. It slowly became 8 treasured duck because there's more room inside a debunked duck than a chicken to include the 8 treasures. You first put lotus root seeds, dried lily petals, sticky rice, shiitake mushrooms, and chopped pork collar butt or cured ham. After it's half filled, add chestnuts, dry scallop, and salted duck egg yolk. At first, it was only steamed, but as people's taste preferences changed, now it's steamed then fried. It was a very popular banquet dish back in the day, but as restaurant goers prefer smaller dishes in a higher variety, this dish is now showing up back as 
ate treasured chicken or squab. This shows us how food is always changing to cater to the patrons. The last dish is partridge congee. The story goes that it was created in Macau in the 30s because people needed a mild food to help soothe their throats after a long night out. It became a popular homestyle congee in the 50s to the 70s because it calms babies down. But there's no rice in this congee dish. Partridge, more tender than chicken, is minced by hand into pieces so small they resemble boiled rice and congee. The chef has to first use stock made of partridge bones, add egg whites and steamed water yam that is made into mash to slowly turn it into a thick soup. For a fancier version, some people add bird's nest in it as well. Just like most of the dishes we talk about in this channel, unfortunately, this dish was almost forgotten and can only be found in a few restaurants today. Access to ingredients is also a problem. There's not a stable supply of partridges and water yam. In replacement, some restaurants use chicken and mountain yam. So what happened to all these new popular dishes that never made it across the Pacific Ocean to the United States in the 30s to the 60s? There are only a handful of restaurants in the whole of Guangdong and Hong Kong today that are still creating these dishes, mostly only as gimmicks on temporary special menus. Some of them are now crammed into one page of the menu at the Canton Room at the now Gloucester Lok Guac Hotel called Reminiscent Dishes. I have to admit, for example, the dish baked fish intestine with egg and clay pot I've had only once in my entire life and honestly don't know if there will be another opportunity to try it again. Maybe there's a certain comfort to know that General Souls chicken, orange chicken, or sweet and sour pork that many of us grew up with in the United States are here to stay at least much longer than their counterparts, those new fancy dishes that emerged around the same time in Guangdong and Hong Kong, where restaurants could no longer afford the craftsmanship and time the dishes require, and patrons' taste and interests change. I hope you like this short episode on new dishes created in Hong Kong and Guangdong in the 30s to the 60s that never showed up in the United States. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. See you soon.